Hey, what's going on, everyone? So can you really eat more to lose body fat? People think they need to starve themselves to lose weight. You know, diets have to be restrictive. They have to be not fun. And I want to go over why starving yourself and drastically slashing your calories may help you lose weight in the short run, but it's not great for your body in the long run. And I want to go over how you can probably eat more than you think in order to get results. So for those who don't know who I am, my name is Luke Briggs. I'm the owner of the Total Life Fitness Academy, where we specialize in helping parents and busy professionals lose body fat, build muscle, and have more energy. I've been a coach for over 10 years. I've worked with nearly 3,000 clients. Also, if you're listening to this episode and you have not yet gone and rated our show, that would really help us grow and reach more people. You just go to uh, my podcast page if you're on Apple or iTunes. You just basically on my main page, just scroll down to the bottom where it says write a review. And if you could give it a five-star rating and review, that'd be super helpful for us to grow and reach more people. So if you're listening to this podcast, I'm assuming that your goal is fat loss, not weight loss. I'm assuming that your goal is to lose body fat and not just to lose weight. Because just because you're losing weight doesn't mean it's healthy. I think most people want to lose primarily body fat while maintaining as much muscle mass as possible. So the thing to remember is that when it comes to losing weight, just in general, your body's number one goal is survival. Your body wants to keep you alive because that's its ultimate goal is to be able to function and do things. So when you're in a calorie deficit, your body perceives that as a threat. Hey, what's going on? I'm used to eating more. Feed me. So when we're in a deficit, ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone, increases while leptin, which tells our brain to stop eating, actually decreases. So our body sends the hunger signal. Our bodies will compensate by burning fewer calories at rest We'll feel more tired. And as I said, our hunger signals are going to go up. We've all been in that deficit where we're just hungry and hungry and hungry. So if you slash your calories like way down to like a thousand calories, I mean, I've literally seen people eating 500 calories a day. I have no idea how they're even functioning, but uh, they can only do that in the short run. Sure, you'll probably lose a bunch of weight right away. We've all seen all these like, you know, four week before and afters where people lose like 15, 20 pounds in four weeks because they are literally starving themselves. The thing is with all these before and after pictures, no one ever looks at the after after. <laughs> Look at that person four weeks later and see where they are or even four months later. So your body will eventually downregulate your metabolism if you slash your calories way down because it doesn't think it needs as much fuel to survive. Metabolic adaptation. You may have heard the term metabolic adaptation. That's what happens is if you're consistently eating fewer calories, your metabolism is going to adjust to that lower calorie amount. And it also works the other way as well, um, which is what we're gonna talk about here shortly. So if you slash your calories way down, we'll also lose muscle. And having more muscle burns more calories. So it's better for our metabolism to have more muscle mass. Then if you have days when you overeat because you're hungry, if you're eating like a thousand calories per day, and then you're probably going to be starving. And then you just have one of those days where you're just like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to eat whatever I want. You're going to gain weight and body fat and gain it pretty hard. Like if you're only eating a thousand calories a day, and then all of a sudden one day you eat 4,500 calories, you can literally put on a pound of body fat. You can literally, because you're just, your body is just primed and ready. It's so hungry. It just wants to gain it back. So all this to say, you're probably wondering right now, am I just screwed? And the answer is no, you're not screwed. You just need a better approach. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is what is my starting point? So have you been dieting for a while? For the last few months, have you been trying to lose weight? Have you been slashing your calories? And does it seem like nothing is working? Or have you just been eating whatever you want and you actually want to start a diet? 
you need to answer that question first because how we approach the next part depends on your starting point, which is why you can't just give blanket advice to people. It needs to have some context. So if you're starting a diet, you need to figure out where your maintenance calories are. Now you can go on Google, type in calorie calculator and probably find a whole bunch of different calorie calculators that can help you calculate what your maintenance calories are or how many calories, quote unquote, you should be taking in. So let's say, for example, your calorie calculator has told you for easy math that you should start with 2000 calories per day. So if your goal is, if you're starting a diet and your goal is to lose weight, you want to start with a slight calorie deficit of maybe 15 to 20%. So if you're at 2000 calories, that would be, you know, 16 to 1700 calories, somewhere in that range. A lot of people make the mistake of just going all the way down to like 1200 or a thousand calories and they'll lose a bunch of weight right away in the beginning. But again, long-term, it's going to have some ramifications. Now, if you've been dieting for a long time, this is where you need to do a reverse diet or a maintenance period, a reverse diet or a maintenance period. So I always like to use the example of an athlete or just a sports team. So I love the NFL. My favorite team is the Green Bay Packers. I live in Wisconsin. Uh, this last season, Packers were eight and nine. So missed the playoffs. Uh, didn't have their best season, but I digress. Hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll be better soon. So the Green Bay Packers play, their, their season starts in September. And then depending on how far they go, you know, if they make it to the Super Bowl, it'll go till early February. Otherwise, it'll be sometime in January. You know, usually the last week of the regular season is like first or second week in January. Then you have the playoffs. And then, you know, you might play in the preseason too. So, you know, you basically have like four or five months of solid playing. And when the Packers are playing, obviously their number one goal is performance. They're hitting people, they're getting hit, they're you know running fast, and they are going hard. Now, if they were to do that 12 months out of the year, their bodies would be absolutely crushed. Like you can't expect to play at that type of intensity all year round. You would literally be walking into an early grave. So for that reason, the Green Bay Packers or just sports teams in general need an off season because in the off season, they need to work on other things for players who have gotten injured during the season. They need to work on rehab recovery. Maybe they need to get a surgery. Maybe they're working on bringing up a weakness. So, you know, maybe they're working on speed or strength or stamina in some areas. So the off season is where they work on those things. Their goal isn't to maximize performance at this point. Their goal is recovery. So it's the same thing with dieting. If you are just dieting all year round, you are literally crushing your body. You're damaging your hormones. You're damaging your metabolism. You are, you're just not putting your body in a very good spot. So in this case, you need to take one step back in order to move two steps forward. You need to take one step back in order to move two steps forward. And this is where reverse dieting comes in. It's important to do at the end of a diet versus just like, let's say you get to your, uh, your weight goal and then all of a sudden you just start eating whatever you want again, you're gonna gain a lot of weight really quickly. Like the problem we have in society generally isn't a weight loss, a weight loss problem. People lose weight every year, but then almost all of those people regain all the weight that they lose, and then sometimes even more. How many people listening to this podcast right now have lost weight before? Probably just about everyone. And how many of you have then gained that weight back? Probably just about everyone at some point or another, which is why you need to take a more strategic approach, which is why we don't have a weight loss problem. We have a weight regain problem. And this is what reverse dieting solves. I want to say that again. We don't have a weight loss problem. We have a weight regain problem. So first of all, it's important to track your food so you know where you're starting from. And if you haven't tracked your food before, you can just use a food tracker and get an estimate of where you're starting from. 
The goal is to recover your metabolism during a, a reverse diet or maintenance period. Recover your metabolism, reset your hormones, and build lean muscle. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start by raising your calories. So by how much you raise your calories depends on who you are, your goals, a number of variables. If you want to minimize fat gain and have it take a little longer, you might want to add like 2 to 5% of your calories back in at first. So let's say you end your diet at 1,500 calories, and I'm using the word diet as fat loss phase or weight loss phase. So let's say, you know, you're at 1500 calories, you know, that would be, you add 30 to 75 calories in right away. If you want to focus on building muscle or you have a history of disordered eating, or you just want to get out of this diet a little bit faster, which this is the approach that I recommend for most people, you could go up by 10% or more. So if you're at 1500 calories, you want to go up to at least 1650, if not a little more, there are obviously some nuances to that. Um, that's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about today. Then once your metabolism recovers and your calories have been raised up and you're feeling better, your hormones have recovered and you're just, your energy is recovered. You're not as hungry. You're feeling satiated. At this point, you can begin to gradually work your calories back down to enter a, a fat loss phase again, if you so desire. So the biggest complaint people are going to have is, well, if I reverse diet, my goal is to lose weight, then I'm going to gain weight. Yes, you will gain weight in the beginning, but it will be worth it. Remember, like if you're gaining weight, you're not just gaining body fat. Like a lot of people see the number on the scale going up and think that it's a bad thing. Remember that your weight is just your body against gravity at one arbitrary moment in time. You could be backed up. You might uh, be gaining muscle. You might be retaining water. You also, if you're, let's be honest, if you're eating more food, you're going to have more gut content. You're going to be, you have more that you're digesting just because you're eating more food. So just know that you will gain weight but you're not just gaining body fat. You're also gaining other things. So as we age, it's even more important that we're fueling ourselves properly and not just being like in a deficit forever. One of the biggest reasons our metabolism goes down as we age is muscle loss. So if we're in a huge calorie deficit, we're going to lose muscle. I want to say that again. If we are consistently in a huge calorie deficit, we are going to lose muscle. We do not want to lose muscle mass. We want to minimize in a deficit the amount of muscle that we lose. If you are a beginner, when it comes to strength training or just dieting in general, when you begin a diet, you're probably going to be gaining muscle and losing body fat at the same time. If you're someone who is more advanced, and you've already gone through a number of dieting phases or reverse dieting phases, when you lose weight, you're also going to lose a little bit of muscle as well. So the goal is to build and maintain muscle, not just to lose weight. Having more muscle mass helps us get stronger, reduce the risk of injury, especially bone fractures. And let's be honest, building muscle just makes us more confident in general. I mean, there are so many other reasons why building muscle is important. Those are just to name a couple. So to understand all of this, it's important to understand TDEE, -E, which stands for total daily energy expenditure. Total daily energy expenditure, TDEE. -E. So we all know that in order to lose weight, you need to burn off more calories than you consume. Calories in, calories out. But how does the, the body actually even expend energy? Or how does your body, what is the calories outside of the equation? We know that the calories inside of the equation is the food that you eat or the drinks that you take in. So there are four ways that our body expends energy. Our BMR or our basal metabolic rate, our NEAT, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis, the thermic effect of food, and exercise activity. Our basal metabolic rate, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, 
the thermic effect of food, and exercise activity. I'll go through each one of those one by one. So the first one is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. This is essentially the number of calories you burn just performing basic functions. You know, respiration, blood circulation, things like that. Like this is just what our body needs to survive. This is literally 60 to 70% of the calories that we'll burn throughout the day. Most people think like it's just exercise, but in reality, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. The majority of the calories that we're going to burn in a day for most of us are going to be from just our normal bodily processes. Neat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You know, the exact percentages of these next three are going to vary per person, but the majority again is from BMR. So with your NEAT, these are going to be things like fidgeting. Um, you know, for me, I personally, I'm always like spinning my pen. Um, it's actually kind of a running joke with uh, our Total Life Fitness staff and I uh, and me that during our staff meetings, I'm always like spinning my pen and then always like dropping it on the floor and then I have to pick it up and I drop it on the floor again and then I have to pick it up. I tend to be a fidgeter, someone who's just always like tapping my foot or tapping my finger or spinning my pen. And some people just are more of fidgeters than others. Like for some people, that's just kind of a, a thing that some people have more than others. But it's also things like brushing your teeth, prepping your food, just moving throughout the day. So your non-exercise activity, that's not purposeful exercise. The thermic effect of food. Different macronutrients require different amounts of energy for your body to process them. Protein, carbs, and fats are your macronutrients. Proteins, carbs, and fats. So protein, about 20 to 35% of your protein calories that you take in are used in digestion and metabolism. And then about 5 to 15% of the calories that you take in from carbs and fats, fats typically being on the lower end, are used in digestion and metabolism. So what does that mean? Basically, Eating protein is actually going to help your body burn more calories. It has a higher thermic effect of food. Your body, because your body basically has way more use for protein because protein is used in every function of your body. It's used in brain function, digestion, blood circulation, protein. So what happens is when you ingest the protein, your body carries it to the different parts of the body. And it burns energy in doing that. In processing it, it's going to burn energy. Whereas if you just eat fast food, there's a reason why it always goes in one end and out the other really quickly. Because your body has no use for any of that stuff. Junk food in general, your body has no use for. It sees it as a foreign invader and wants to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So... Eating more protein is going to help burn more calories. Not a ton, but some. Score another one for why you want to eat more protein because of the thermic effect of feeding. Then the fourth thing, uh, the fourth aspect of TDEE, of total daily energy expenditure, is your exercise activity. Now, most people way overestimate how many calories they burn from exercise. You know, we probably all have like fitness trackers or smartwatches. I have the Fitbit Versa and they can be off by anywhere from 40 to 80% in terms of the actual calories that you're burning. I want to say that again, your fitness tracker that's telling you that you're burning a thousand calories is not correct. You are not burning a thousand calories in like 30 to 60 minutes or whatever it is, right? It's usually, it's usually a pretty high amount. So all this is to say, and I, I want to put one caveat on that as well. If you are like an endurance athlete who's working out like multiple times per day, you are going to burn off a lot more calories from exercise activity. For the average person, you are not going to burn off that many calories from exercise activity. Again, all this is to say that BMR is hugely important and your body needs more calories than you're giving it when you're in a substantial deficit, just to function. So let's give an example here. Let's say you are a 35-year-old woman 
you're five foot six and you're 150 pounds. Let's say you're a 35 year old woman, you're five foot six, you're 150 pounds. Your BMR, according to the calorie calculator that I used, is estimated to be 1,392 calories per day. That's just to stay alive, 1,392 calories. So if you're eating only 1,200 calories per day for an extended period of time, you're not even giving your body enough energy to perform its normal functions. We can literally create health problems for ourselves by being in a deficit long-term. You can sometimes be there in the short term, but if long-term, you are just slashing your calories, you are creating a whole host of health concerns for your body. So stop doing it to yourself. This is why we talk to our clients inside the Total Life Fitness Academy about having maintenance periods where the goal is actually not to lose weight. We can't just be in a deficit forever. We need to have strategic periods of time where we're losing weight and then strategic periods of time where we are not focused on losing weight but as we talked about earlier, having that off season where we allow our bodies to recover. So I wanna go with another note about eating more food. We have a lot of clients who join our program who are surprised actually with how much food they can eat while still losing weight. So the quality of food that you eat can make it feel like you're getting more than you were previously. So for example, if you were eating a lot more junk food, Junk food, like, you know, cereal, crackers, chips, whatever it is, is much more calorically dense, whereas certain foods like meat, fishes, um, veggies, uh, sweet potato, rice, whatever it is, is much more nutrient dense. So basically what that means is that you can get a lot more food volume or feel like you're eating more while you're actually eating fewer calories taking in higher quality food versus like you could have, you know, a bag of potato chips that hardly feels like you're eating anything at all. And it could be like 500 calories. Whereas you could have, you know, 500 calories of protein. And that's like, you can't even eat that much, right? That's like an insane amount of protein. So we have a lot of clients who, when they first start with us, when they increase their protein intake and when they increase the quality of food that they're eating, they actually feel fuller. So it actually feels like they're eating more food. So that can also make it feel like you're eating more food too. You may be wondering, well, how do I even know where to start? So just know that everything that I'm talking about right here is just a high level overview. I basically, I'm just going through the concept of why it is important to not be dieting forever. And that if you are stuck, it is important to go through a reverse diet or maintenance period. Obviously there are a lot more nuances to this, and we may cover that in a future episode. But if you've been dieting for a really long time, like months on end, and you're not losing weight, you may want to consider a reverse diet. Now, in order to do a reverse diet, you need to know what your calorie intake is. So you need to figure out how many calories your body is taking in to maintain your current weight. Then you need to slowly increase your calorie intake to help your body your hormones, your metabolism recover. So again, there are many calorie calculators out there. It depends on what you want to use. Some are better than others. But then if you have no idea how many calories you're even taking in at this point, you might actually find that you are actually taking in more calories than you think anyway, and you don't even need a reverse diet. And you just need to actually go through a dieting phase or a fat loss phase. I find for most people who are first starting out, this is usually the case because we think we're in a calorie deficit, but then we forget about the 200 calories of creamer that we added into our coffee in the morning, or we forget about the handful of nuts that we grabbed to tide ourselves over, quote unquote, uh, to dinner. And then we just added another 500 calories right there. We think it's like 100 calories, but it's really like 500 calories. And then we forget about those bites of our kids' food that we took while we're prepping them dinner. There's another 400 calories. And before you know it, you added like, over a thousand calories that you didn't even realize you were taking in. So that's why just bringing awareness to what your intake is in the beginning is super important. So hopefully this is all, hopefully all this is helpful for you. If you have any further questions, uh, you can 
Uh, I put all my info in the show notes. Feel free to reach out, ask questions, and happy to see if we can help. So until next time, we'll chat soon.